Hello everyone, it's Kyle here, and in this week's tutorial we're going to be learning about array operations in EV3G. I'm making this video today as part of a little mini-series on like back to basics that focuses on individual blocks within the EV3 programming software. And of course today's video is on the array operation. Now, an array is not something specific to the EV3 programming language. As a matter of fact, it's universal across pretty much every computer. And I think first it's uh, important to understand what, an exa what exactly an array is and what it does before we look at the array within the EV3 programming language. So an array is just a computer's way of storing uh, a bunch of pieces of data together. And you can think of an array as kind of like a, a compartment, a cabinet with a lot of different compartments, with each compartment being an index, and each of these individual indices can hold a piece of information. Now, I know it's tempting for a lot of people to think of an array as a list, but an array is not a, a list. The compartment analogy works better because the indices don't necessarily need to be related to one another. Now, the indices in an array can be sequential and, and store the elements of a list, but it doesn't always have to be that way. So in an array, an array has a name, and then within the array you have uh, indices, and each individual index can store a piece of information. And the first index is called zero because computers start counting as zero. And then after that you have all the following indices, one, two, three, and so on, however many that you need. And an array can store numerical values or can store uh, logic states, which are true or false. But that's pretty much the basics behind an array, where each piece of data is assigned an index and stored there. And it's just a way of storing a bunch of different data all together, kind of under one roof, so to speak. So what does the array look like within the EV3 programming language? Let's check it out. Here I have opened the EV3 programming software so I could show you this array operations block, which you will find under the red data operations tab. It's the third from the left. So I'm going to drag this out so I could show you what you could do with this block. So in the bottom left corner, of course, where you select the mode, the first mode is append, and you have the choice of either numeric or logic. Numeric, of course, being a number value, so you could think of 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 5, pi, any number you could think of you could store in here. Of course, within the constraint of the maximum size number the EV3 can store. You also have logic, which is just true or false, yes or no, which would be the values you get from the touch sensor, for example. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll use numeric just so I could just demonstrate, but you're going to use whichever of these data types you need for your specific robot at that specific time. So if I select numeric, we have a few different inputs here. We have array in. This is the name of the array that you want to write your new index to. And at the same time, you have value, which is the value you want to add to the array. You'll notice that it doesn't actually have an input for index. The reason why is because this append mode is going to add your new value sequentially. It's going to take whatever the last index in the array is, add a new index after that, and then add the new value in there. So if you need your array to work sequentially where it's always adding a new value after the last one, this is the one you need. And of course this array out output just takes the whole array and allows you to plug it in wherever you need to go. So if you need to, after you wrote this new index to the array, you can take the array and move it somewhere else in your program. The next mode is read at index. Again you have the same choices, numeric or logic. What this does is it allows you to specify, well first of course you specify which array you want by its name, and you specify the specific index. Uh, so of course zero is the first index in an array uh, because computers start counting from zero whereas people start counting from one, so be, just be wary of that. So after you've chosen the array and the index, this value tab allows you to take whatever value, numerical or uh, logic value, that was stored in the index you've chosen and use it elsewhere in your program. So this is your read operation where you choose your array and the index and retrieve that value. After that you have write at index which is very similar. Um, this time instead of reading of course you're writing, you're adding a new value to the array that you spe uh, index that you specify. So you choose the array, you choose the index, and you choose the value that you want put into that index. And remember again, zero is the first index in an array. The difference between this and the append mode that we went over before is like I said, append just adds a new index at the end after the last whatever index that you just modified is. 
this one allows you to write to whatever index that you want not necessarily in sequential order or even overwrite an index that already has a value written to it and then this array out does the same thing where you could just take this array and then use it uh, in another part of the, the program and of course this is the array as a whole and then finally we have length which again is numeric or logic you choose whatever data type matches the array you choose the array that you want to reference by name um, of course this is array 0 by default and this block just gives you the length of the array the number of indices that it contains so let's say I have an array that's named 5 and it has 5 indices so you're if you type in 5 for the name of the array it's going to return a length of 5 and that's going to be a number value so that's how you would find out how many indices are in a given array another type of read so that's pretty much all of the modes that you could use with the array and that's how you use an array operation within EV3 please comment below and let me know if you're planning on using this in any type of project because I'm very curious to see what you guys will make using this array of course it's a very useful operation to have Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.